The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 17th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. But look, if you've got a question and you can't call in, we've got your back. You can always send me an email. Please send that off early and send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our tiger den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Slightly mixed bag out there. You've got the Dow up 32. S&P is up one. Uh, NASDAQ is up five. Russell's up one. Semis are up six. Tranny's down 22. You got gold trading up 35 bucks, one and a half percent, nearly four percent for silver. That's a dollar and six. Uh, Lights Recruit is up uh, 20 cents, printed out at 79.43. Natural Gas up nine pennies, printed out at 259. 30 year treasures off 10 ticks. She's printed out at 117.19. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is uh, MicroStrategy, 114 points, eight percent move. Netflix, nine uh, bucks, one and a half percent asthma holdings nine bucks one percent hubspot 760 one and a quarter and reddit is up 760 that's nearly a 14 percent move to the upside to the downside it's led by lamb research off nearly 13 bucks a little over one percent globant sa down nearly 12 bucks or six percent broadcom nine bucks six tenths percent crackle crack crackle or cracker barrel is down 860 that's a 15 percent move and nvidia down 850 that's about a little less than one percent move to the downside so where do we want to begin let's begin by going and taking a look at uh, what's going on inside the markets out here uh, by looking at those white background charts we'll begin by taking a look at the four daily equity future contracts now, one of the things that you'll notice, or one of the things you should notice, is that yesterday was the completion of a TD9 count top for the ES Mini, for the NQ, and for the Dow. If price closes above those highs, that's going to tell us that we have a strong upward momentum move. What should transpire is price should pull back to support. Now, we've got a new profile that has been attempting to form. It's been on and off inside the ES Mini. It keeps shifting. It's right now below price. So where is support? Let's assume that this is the profile that takes place out here. Support would be between 52.68 and 52.84. But I don't know. Stevie doesn't know if this profile is going to take hold or not. What the real support level is right now for the ES Mini on a downside move would be 52.52 or thereabouts. That would be its oscillator and change line. In the case of the NQ, no new profile, though it has been attempting to form a new profile uh, during the day today as well. It's a level that it should target to the downside, at least its first level to the downside would be 18,310 or thereabouts. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it's 34,965. Now, if new profiles form, that will provide us with new targets, much like we just were taking a look at inside the ES Mini. Now, when it comes to the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 does not have a topping pattern. Doesn't mean it hasn't topped. What it does mean, it does not have a topping pattern. What it does need is a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point top. 
Here is also a new profile that is attempting to form. It's got resistance at 2116 and support in a buy zone between 2059 and 2067. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. Let's go take a look at the cash indices out here. Because what we're going to see is just simply a slew of TD9 counts as well. So if you take a look at the Dow, no surprise, it's got a, a TD9 count. Again, a close above yesterday's high says we move higher. Short of that, price should pull back towards 39.363. The S&P 500, same pattern. Price should pull back towards 52.33. The NASDAQ 100, same pattern. Price should pull back towards 18,233. The Russell here in the cash index, much like the equity future contract, needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. In the case of the semis, they have attained at least the one to one A to B equals CD pattern. They need a bearish reversal candle as well to identify a top. The transports, which are trading lower, a little bit lower, uh, 25 points as we speak right now. They have a TD9 count top that formed uh, four days ago, completed three days ago. Its price target is 15,417. The NASDAQ composite does not have a topping signal. It, much like the Russell 2000, needs a uh, bearish reversal candle to generate a sell the D point pattern. And the New York Stock Exchange will complete its TD9 count top as we speak today. So you got topping patterns. Uh, does that mean that the market's going to top? It doesn't mean that it will top, but we sure have tons of signals that tell us that it would like to. And so we'll only know over the course of time. But again, if we start uh, closing above yesterday's highs, well, then at that stage, we know that there is no top at all, at least not with regard to the signals that Stevie has. Uh, if we go take, we talked about the New York Stock Exchange. I'll flip back to the uh, black background charts because we're going to go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator out there. So let's move back to those charts. Again, on that New York Stock Exchange, you've got a TD9 count top that formed yesterday. It's going to go ahead and complete today. And if we take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, we have a divergence between the advanced client oscillator, which has been making a series of lower highs, with price in the New York Stock Exchange making higher highs. We've got a number of those other chart patterns that are identified on this chart. Now, we have a top, as we talked about, inside the New York Stock Exchange. That should lead to lower price. Now, only if we get that spot volatility so above its 50-day exponential moving average, would we start seeing some of these other larger moves that we've got identified out here. And right now, price is below that 50-day exponential moving average, so it's kind of an offset there. Uh, what else can I share with you? Um, what else can I share with you here? Nothing that I can think of, so let's flip back to take a look at the equity futures again. Let's go take a look at Stevie's multi-panel set of charts. It's likely going to be the ES Mini that'll pop up when I get to that specific uh, spot. Let's find out. Yeah, it is the ES Mini. So what do we have going on short term? Well, I, I would say that 53.18 is your key level of support this morning. If you look at the 10-minute and the 15-minute chart, both have breakout levels at 53.18. We can see that all morning long, price has been trying to bust through that level. It has not been able to do so. So I would say a 10- and 15-minute close below 53.18. Let's make it 53.17 because that's the bottom of the profile in a 30-minute time frame. That would suggest a further move lower out there. Uh, we're trading between profiles inside the 60-minute uh, chart. 53.18 looks to be the bottom of its profile. Same thing on the 120-minute. 53.12 was the 240-minute out there. So let's make it that 53.12 level. If price in the ES Mini closes below that, we should head lower. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We get back in this break. Let's look at UNH, CPRT, ABUS, uh, MARA, the Euro, HUD, as well as Stevie's horizontal trading range boundary lines. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get to our first request. This is coming in from Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den, and he'd like to take a look at United Health. UNH is the uh, ticker symbol. He's interested in longer term approach out here. Now, we can take a look at United Health and uh, first see, though, Mr. Bill, that on a daily time frame, yesterday was the completion of a TD9 count top right at the TD9 count breakdown resistance level 525.59. So, what should transpire? is you should see price pull back towards the 51025 level. That is its oscillator and change line. Of course, if price closed above yesterday's high, then price should continue to move higher. Now, the weekly chart shows that price is up against resistance this week, the top of its profile, 52635. If price were to close above that today, that would be a positive. Otherwise, you got resistance on the daily, resistance on the weekly. The daily's got a top. You should see price pull back. The monthly time frame chart, simply shows a consolidation with inside its profile and a resistance is either 535 and a quarter or 554.70. You've got that A to B equals CD pattern. I've drawn in it on the weekly chart. It's the same pattern on the daily chart. Neither cross their B points with volume. Doesn't mean that it won't go ahead and fulfill the price objective of 547.99. Um, and if it's going to do that, it'll get up to the 550 weekly TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So I think longer term, things look okay. Um, it's really the daily chart that you need to keep an eye on. Again, if you close above yesterday's high, price should continue moving higher, even if it is on light volume. So, Mr. Bill, hope that helps you out with regard to United Health. And I hope that you are in great United Health yourself. So we're going to go take a look at CPRT. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. That's going to be our next uh, symbol that we're going to pop up on our screen here, and that is Copart Inc. And Copart Inc. right now is trading below. We can see a TD9 count breakout level as well as its daily profile. It is trading into a swing point that if we were to close below, would generate an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So that swing point is a swing point from April 19th. That generated volume of 5.7 million shares. In the first Less than two hours of trading, you've done 2 million shares. 
two million says we are going to do equal to or greater than or should do that type of volume. So if price closes inside, that means below 53.62 or 53.54 today, you should at least see a run down to 52.41. If price takes out 52.41, that's going to set up your A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, we can also see that at 52.36, you have weekly profile support. So again, that makes that 52.41 level key, but we're going to shift that to 52.36. So Dan, if Copart were to close below 52.36, and certainly if it were to do it with volume, then you'd have an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and draw that in because we don't really have that pattern just yet, but I would suspect that the price target would be somewhere around 47.73. If price so 52.36 is a key area support. If you look at the monthly time frame chart, we can see that the green oscillator and change line after forming a monthly uh, Rhodesman indicator top is at 52.27. So price should really get down to those levels. The question is, will it bust out the lows to generate an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside? I don't know the answer to that. But if we do get closes below those levels of, of support, we would most definitely know. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Copart CPRT is the ticker symbol. Uh, Dan also wanted to take a look at ABUS. So let's get those charts up on our screen. That is Air Butus Biopharma. And I'm pretty sure I butchered the name of that. Is it Arbutus? Probably. That sounds a little bit better than what Stevie came up with the first time around. But regardless, if we take a look at ABUS, what is it doing? It's going to go target 305. Now, how can you say that, Stevo? Well, I can say that because one, price is traded above its daily profile. Price is traded above its green oscillator and change line. Those conditions are bullish, period, end of story. Where's the next level of resistance? 305. It's also taking out a swing point. Let's check out the volume. That's a swing point from the trading session of May the 10th. 697,000 shares on that day so far. You've done 311. So price is moving into a swing point with volume. If price can close above 305, that's its resistance level, its TD9 count resistance level, then what you're going to get is an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. You actually have that as we speak right now as the A to B equals CD pattern. The question is, can price take out resistance at 305? If it, so I would say that the range for this move ought to be between 305 to 314. You know what, Dan, that is also supported by the weekly chart. The weekly chart is trading above profile resistance. I don't know where it closes the day, but if you're long this, I'm assuming you're long this, well, what we'd like to see is a close above 296. That would add to the idea of price continuing to move higher, which is really the message from the monthly chart as price is above profile and its oscillator and change line. So it does look like to me, Arbutus Biopharma wants to continue higher up towards that 305, 314 area out there. Hope that helps you out, Dan, with regard to that trade. Mr. Bill wanted to take a look at horizontal trading ranges for some of the indices. So let's go ahead. We're going to navigate back to those black background charts. And we'll pull Mr. Bill, anything specific? Which one did you want to take a look at? I know you just kind of said really any of them. Um, so let's start off with the Dow, the Dow's party, the $40,000 party out there. Oh, the e well, so the ES uh, is gets, gets very complicated because of the data out there, Mr. Bill, as you can imagine. Um, and so we really have to be the S&P 500. So if that's okay with you, um, which you don't really have a choice, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the S&P 500 for you. And here we'll take a look at his monthly, daily, and weekly horizontal range horizontal trading ranges. What are those? You know, it's an excellent question. Let me open up the uh, weekly time frame chart and describe, well, geez, that's pretty ugly. Maybe that's not the best chart to open up. Let me, let me, uh, let me just refresh this screen out here. Uh, I don't think that's going to do it. No. Give me a second here to, uh, Sorry about that, Mr. Bill. Normally, I have this stuff set up, so I don't have to go through sometimes these issues out here. But if you give me a moment, put turn this up. Whoa, turn this back on. There we go. So horizontal trading ranges, they were – it's a tool – referred to as primary trading ranges, brought to us by a name, guy named Bud Rawls, who was a host here a decade ago, decade ago plus. And it's a very cool tool. He was able to do this manually, which he, what he was looking for was the largest number of co-located, co-located, doesn't matter whether it's an open or a close, but it needs to be one of either of those or both, uh, the, the largest number of opening closes, co-located opening closes out there. And in this case here, we can see the largest number on a weekly time frame comes at the price point of 1139. 
The next number out here is uh, there were 63. The next number would be up at uh, 2087.40. And what that sets up, that sets up its horizontal trading range. Now, what I've got up here, the reason why there's something in between is because I've got the midpoints of those two turned on on the screen. Oftentimes, they act as support or resistance levels. Take a look at the uh, move lower back in October of 2022. Price found resistance. Once you have that price distance, you just keep adding it to it, to the top and to the downside. So here we take a look the ES Mini, its next level of resistance on a weekly time frame chart, the ES Mini, the S&P 500, Mr. Bill, is up at 54.05. So far, the high this week has been, yeah, good question, on my data panel, so I'm not going to be able to answer that easily. That's what the weekly charts are showing us. If we take a look at the daily time frame charts, the daily time frame charts show what? They show that we, its next area of, uh, its next target area to the upside would be 54.07. Likewise, a move to the downside because of those TD9 count tops, should find support at around 52.13. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Diners, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. I've got the uh, monthly. Let's just finish off the horizontal trading range uh, charts out there. I've got the monthly chart up on our screen. What we can see here. So this chart here shows us both horizontal and diagonal support and resistance levels. So the green ones, the diagonal ones, are the rising, in this case here, rising channel line. So much like the horizontal trading range, all you do is identify one <laughs> diagonal range. And we've done that here by taking a look at the, you can see on the lower side, as well as on the upper side up there. I just really calculated the first one. Once you do this first one, and then you could just simply add to that, that distance. And we can see that the interesting thing here is this chart was uh, developed quite a while ago, years ago. And uh, you can see that price in the S&P 500 is running right up into a, a diagonal uh, resistance level just at the time that we're producing those TD9 counts. So I would expect a, a short-term, at least a short-term uh, top uh, to form out there. So, Mr. Bill, I hope that helps you out with regard to the S&P 500. And as always, excuse me, thanks you for your request out there. S&P inside the Tiger's Den. <coughs> Boy, excuse me wants to take a look at ticker symbol M-A-R-A. -A. So we're going to go ahead and flip over to those white background charts out there. And if we take a look at Mara, what is it doing? Well, the first thing that we can see is it's trading above, trying to take out both a profile resistance level in the TD9 count breakdown area. And this has been a strong area of resistance in the past, um, S&P, and that is between the range of 2057 to 2103. We can also see that if price could close above the high from A6, the high from A6 is 2103. And if it could do it with more than 87 million shares, that would trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Uh, but we don't know whether that will unfold or not, but that's something that you should be watching for. Again, that swing point, by the way, which we're trading into, 87 million shares. So far today, 23 million shares. So. It's coming in with pretty decent volume. Mathematically speaking, it's just a tad light, but I don't know how the day will end out there. But things look good, but you've got a consolidation on the daily time frame. The monthly time or the weekly time frame says to us that if price can take out this TD9 count, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line has acted as resistance ever since March 15th of 2023 and uh, 2024. And if price can close above this level, this level being 2074, we're 2079 right now. You know, S&P, to, to, to break it by three or four pennies, isn't exactly the kind of break that you or I would be looking for. But let's face it, if it can close above it, that would be a positive. The monthly chart, it's trading below profile, but it's found support. It's trading within its profile. My apology. And because that's a green asset and change line, that says that what uh, uh, Mara should do is continue to move higher. So it's really going to be about the resistance here on the weekly, the oscillator and change line, and the uh, profile uh, resistance up at 2103. Again, if you can close above that level, you're going to get an A to B equals CD pattern uh, to the upside. So S&P, hope that helps you out, and we'll take a look at Hood here in a moment. But first, Peter wanted to take a look at the euro. We do have uh, call-ahead seating here. So let's go take a look at the euro out here. We'll take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound, because they make up 83% of the U.S. dollar index. So in the case of the euro, it has an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Um, no reason to really have to draw that in as we speak right now. Uh, but price should take us up towards that 109.42 level. That's its TD9 count breakdown resistance area. Um, if we were to close below yesterday's low out there, and yesterday's low, Peter, is 1.0854, I would then say, even though we've got an A to B equals CD to the upside, and even though it hasn't completed that pattern or it, has, it doesn't have a, a bearish reversal candle, but if we were to close below yesterday's low, I would then suggest that price would at least be trying to pull back to test support. That would be that oscillator and change line. That's in the 107.91 level. Now, the weekly chart is going to close above its oscillator and change line. Let's open this up here. And what we can see out here for the most part, eh, not much really. I mean, there's a descending trend line, right? So we can draw this in here. It just would look like this. So perhaps what we're taking a look at is the euro trying. So how would the euro get up to that level? How would we know? That's the 110 area. Well, quite frankly, if we get up towards that 110, we're going to be 109.42 on that daily time frame chart. So you've got the A to B equals CD pattern. Unless uh, only if price were to close below yesterday's low, well, that suggests that we move lower even further. If we take a look at the euro, I don't think we want to look at a five hour time frame chart, do we? 
I mean, it's almost like the daily, although you did get a TD9 count top. That explains the move lower that we saw take place yesterday and or today. And price found support at the top of that profile. But let's try to dig down just a little bit further. Let's go into that 30-minute chart. We'll stay with the threes out there and just see what the 30-minute time frame chart. TD9 count bottom formed at its low. That pattern here completed at 8 o'clock this morning. So that's why we're seeing the rally that we're seeing. And it's uh, taking on trend line, uh, not trend line, it's TD9 count breakdown resistance level 1.087 we got one close above it uh, if we close above it at 12 noon again that would suggest a move up to 1.0887 out there so that's what i see when i take a look at the uh, euro charts watch today's low because that's also a td9 cow bottom and a price were to close below that that would suggest a further move lower in the case of the uh, japanese yen out here what is it doing yeah, I don't have a great read on the uh, daily time frame. It could be setting up an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That would be the signal if we were to see a close of a 156 of uh, one uh, 15614. The uh, Great British Pound is going to go take on TD9 count breakdown resistance at the 1207. I'm sorry, the 1.27 uh, level out there. If price can close above that, it's got an A to B equal CD pattern. Price should continue to move higher, and a, the first bearish reversal candle would identify a sell the D point pattern. So, Peter, thanks for the request to take a look at the uh, currency pairs out there. Hope that information provided you with what you were looking for. S&P inside the Tiger's End wanted to take a look at Hood H double. OD. So we're going to switch back to those black ground. Oh, we are in the white background charts. Okay, good. So we take a look at H double OD out here, having a stellar day and trading into a swing point high. A swing point high in a daily time frame that I can take a look at is from the day of March the 26th. That had volume of on that day, 31 million shares. So far, we're at 26 million shares. So the very first thing that this tells you and I, s &P, is price should at least go target the high. And that high out there is at 20.55. We'll see at 20.55, that is also where we've got a TD9 count top on the weekly time frame. If price is able to take that out, close above it, well, then you've got a failed pattern and we are going to move higher. Now, if we open up that weekly time frame chart, we can see a couple different A to B equals CD patterns to the upside. If we we're going to use a conservative one, we would use a swing point from back here on January 19th. Let's not worry about that as we speak right now until price takes out that resistance of that March 29th swing point high out there. But that is where price is gunning for. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, everything here looks pretty cool too. So Hood should go target those highs and if it can take those out, it's going to generate a new A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So hope that helps you out and thank you so much for those requests. S&P, we're going to take a URA for LB, AMD for Nancy, TGB for Dan from New York, Ricey for Ron, PLTR for Jambalaya, and uh, looks like Zscaler for ESV inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, You've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, folks, uranium is on the move uh, this morning. We can see we're taking a look at the, uh, let me actually close this up and let's take a look at the daily time frame first. Daily time frame is uh, trying to take out a, a swing point from back on February the 1st. Now, that swing point generated a volume of 5.1 million shares. We're at 4.6 million shares as we speak today. A close above that high, that high, by the way, is 32.60. We're at 32.74 right now. Is going to trigger a very large A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. We're going to look at the weekly chart for that. A close today above as well a close day above 32.50 negates a roadsman to indicator top out there so everything is looking pretty good for ura at least as of 11:43 in the morning turns out on that weekly time frame chart the swing point the same swing point that we were looking at earlier which would be from the week of february 2nd 16 million shares well this is already done 14 million shares and again on the daily time frame it's done 4.6 already so odds favor you're going to get a close above that swing point as we speak now that's going to set up a ginormous a to b equals cd pattern to the upside out there um where would that take us to so let me do the measurement on my other screen if that's okay with you um, it, it, it it has to be at this moment. 4106 uh, LB, 4106 would be the A to B equals CD pattern on the daily and the weekly time frame. If we look at the monthly chart, now the monthly chart is attempting to take out a TD nine count top from February of 2024 as well. And that number is 3260, it's only the 17th. Now the volume there was uh, 66 million shares. So far you're at about 40 million shares for the month. So we really don't know about that, but the daily looks muy bueno, the weekly looks muy bueno as well. And you could be dealing with a very large A to B equal CD. The last piece of resistance you'd be looking at or dealing with would be that monthly TD nine count top. So you need to see a close above 3260 out there. So LB, hope that helps you out. Nancy wants to take a look at AMD. So let's get those charts up on our screen out here and see what AMD is doing. It's right now trading an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Uh, it's beyond the one-to-one -one level, and it's uh, trading above the top of its daily profile, which is really a TD9 count breakdown resistance level as well at 165.70. So everything here as we speak right now, Nancy, looks good. If you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would then trigger a sell the D point pattern. What we like on the weekly chart is price had closed below its weekly bullish structured profile for more than two consecutive weeks. If the move in AMD was only a counter trend move, where price would find resistance is at the center. So you want to watch today's close, Nancy. If price is able to close at or below 164.45, then you're getting a message of a potential that's where the counter trend rally ends of course you wouldn't have that confirmation on the daily unless you were to see a bearish reversal candle likewise on the weekly if price closes above that 164.45 level then the signal to you would be a move up towards 174.68 or 179.80 
on the monthly chart, it had a Rosemont indicator top. And this month and last month, prices tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line. That says that on the monthly chart, the overall signal is neutral. It has a new profile, and the resistance level here is 200.46. So everything looks good. You, you're pulling, if I assume you're long, you're pulling for a close above 164.45 today to give you the all clear message. Nance, I hope that helps you out. Let's go take a look at TGB for Dan in New York. And Dan, if you're a Rangers fan, uh, congrats to you. That was a heck of a uh, game. Uh, yesterday, they had a heck of a series out there. You know, they have uh, only had two losses out there. They are still, I believe, the strongest team, at least with regard to the uh, number of losses out there. And then how about the Vancouver Edmonton game? I just happened to wake back up and came downstairs and watched the end of that game. And tonight's going to be two good, uh, a couple of good games as well. Anyways, that's not what you were asking about. You wanted to ask about the Seiko Mines, which today is going to complete a TD nine count top. So, Dan, whatever today's high is, I don't know what it's going to be. But whatever today's high is, at the moment, it's probably like 294. Whatever today's high is, if price closes above that on Monday, you have a strong upward momentum move that's underway. Otherwise, price should pull back to test support. There would be two levels to be watching. The first level would be 274 or thereabouts, the daily oscillator and change line. The second would be 262. That would be the top of its daily profile. The weekly time frame chart looks pretty good in that it's going to negate a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top formed back on the week of um, April 19th. That's led to a sideways move. It's taking out a swing point, the swing point from a couple weeks ago. That swing point generated volume of 17 million shares to Seiko Lines at 16.2. So it looks like you're going to take out that weekly swing point on volume. The monthly chart looks good. Let's open up this weekly chart a bit further, see what else we can. So there's an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway out here on the weekly time frame. You need another bearish reversal candle to confirm a top it up, but really this looks really good. It's is We must be near its all-time highs or at its all-time highs. Yeah, we are. Well, certainly we are. Yeah, so for Tseko Mine. So this looks good. It's the daily time frame that's the one that suggests you could see a bit of a pause out there. Only the daily time frame. Now, if we look at a 30-minute chart out here, the 30-minute chart is uh, forming a TD9 count or did form a TD9 count. Uh, it's, it's in the process. It will complete that pattern in another um, 13, 12 minutes out there. Uh, so that suggests a retracement back to about the 284, 287 level. If price closed below 284, 268 would be the uh, number out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to TGB. Let's go take a look at Ricey, R-Y-C-E-Y. -E this is for Ron, who is looking for an entry point. So let's take a look at uh, this symbol. R-Y-C-E-Y -E is Rolls-Royce. I like it. So we take a look at the rolls out here. What do we see? Jeez, what do we see? The thing that I see on a monthly basis is that a TD9 count top is going to form between this month and the next two. Bar number eight, last month. Bar number nine is going to complete this month, so you're going to have a confirmed TD9 count pattern. And that suggests you could start to see a retracement. So the monthly is the easy one to identify. If we look at the weekly chart out here, what do we have? Well, there's certainly an A to B equals CD pattern and no bearish reversal candle as of yet. So if RY, and you're looking for an entry point, though. You're looking for an entry point. So let's look at the daily time frame. Daily time frame has a Rochman indicator top. It's led to a consolidation with inside its profile and even below profile of support. This one's a tough one to give you, Ron, right now, an entry point. Here's what I'd ask you to do for me. I'd ask you to continue to monitor this, which I know that you will. And as it starts to move lower, even though you might say, well, Steve, it's moved lower yesterday and today. It needs to move lower, like towards the 515, more likely the 499 level out there. So if price were to get down there, and those areas could be buy points, if they are going to be buy points, for example, what you and I would do is we go take a look at the intraday charts, such as the 65-minute time frame chart, and look for a bottom pattern. We don't have one on the 65-minute time frame chart. Let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here. But that, in essence, is what we would do as price would be pulling back to what could be a support level on the daily time frame. We'd be looking for some type of bottom. We don't have that signal here on a 30-minute time frame chart either. So I'm just going to ask for a little bit of patience from you. 
Um, and uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully I get that. When we come back to this break, we'll have to do it relatively quickly. Take a look at Palantir for Jambalaya and Z Z Scaler for ESVX inside the Tiger Stick. You right. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go take a look at Palantir for Jambalaya out here. We'll get that uh, screen up momentarily. So we take a look at Palantir. What you have out here, Jam, is uh, nothing more right now than a consolidation with inside its daily profile. It's got a TD9 count bottom that formed back out here on a April 19th. That swing point had volume of 39 million shares. It was tested with 59 million shares. Then it was tested with 37 million shares. And then a new profile form. Now, new profiles got support at 2099, resistance 2244. A price is trading above profile on the uh, weekly chart, but below its oscillator and change line. So, uh, not giving us a ton of information out there. And uh, so, I just go with the consolidation pattern on the uh, daily time frame between support and resistance. Let's go take a Z scale or ZS is the uh, ticker symbol. 
out here. Z scale and right now trading above the top of its daily profile. It's got a Roachman indicator bottom. Uh, if it can, uh, if it can maintain staying above 178.99, this should rally further. Rally further to where? Well, it's trading into its sell zone, the sell zone for its weekly time frame. So this is the level where it's going to get a bit bumpy. And that's between 182.19. And 186.05. You've got a TD9 count bottom, and if price can clear 186.05, you ought to see a move up towards 196.54. That's what I see when I take a look at Zscaler. We had a request to take a look at Ethereum out here for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. As we take a look at it, uh, it is trading above profile resistance. Uh, the profile resistance is at 2185. So you've got a profile change in trend on the daily time frame. The weekly shows that price is trading with inside its profiles. It found support at the bottom at 2032. So since the daily is in a breakout mode, that should take price up towards 2540. And that's the oscillator and change line on the weekly time frame. The monthly, just a good old fashioned consolidation between profile levels. Resistance at 2545, support at 1268 out there. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me on fantastic friday remember we got td9 counts all over the place out there that says if you see closes above yesterday's high and most of the cash indices that's going to suggest that we had higher and probably much higher likewise we're in a period where we should see a timeout and at least a pullback to test support so have a fabulous friday folks and i look forward to seeing you on magical monday take care be safe out there